Hello. Uh, we are Makey Lab. We're just under, well, about two years old now, and we formed in London. My name is Alice, and this is Sulka, and he's from Helsinki. Uh, and we make toys using on demand manufacturing, mainly 3D printing. Our first product is Makey's, which is an avatar to doll product. Uh, you can build your doll using an avatar based system through the web and, and iPad at the moment, and our game is coming soon. And our software manufacturing system pushes those models to 3D printers of all kinds, brings them back to us, and we send out a co-created toy to the maker. Um, we do this in London. This is probably the first time that toys have been made in London since, well, 100 years ago or so. Uh, so we're bringing manu manufacturing back. Um, but fundamentally, each toy is unique. We started with dolls because dolls is the number one toy category. The second biggest category is construction, and on it goes. And what we're doing is blending the business of free-to-play mobile games with physical toy manufacturer. One day, back again, too. So um, we are the world's first 3D printed toy. Uh, I can say that because we achieved toy safety testing, which is obviously critical if you want to get to children. Uh, we're European safety tested for 3 plus, and now we're working on America and Asia. And uh, despite still being in alpha, we consider ourselves not even at beta yet. We've just won um, three significant toy awards, including the one I'm most proud of, Dad's Choice. This came about, our background is in games. And we saw, um, obviously, lots of business in virtual goods. And we thought a couple of years ago, wouldn't it be nice if you could turn these virtual goods into physical goods without having to wait years, without having to go to China, without having to spend millions on marketing months and months, if not years after the fact, after you've had the, the idea. The traditional industry has been changing radically for 30 years now. Um, it's been consolidating in the Far East. The American, British, European manufacturing systems have all gone over there. And it can take up to seven years to bring a new toy to market. In the meanwhile, we still have, we have the maker thing happening at the same time, which brings new manufacturing, 3D printing, laser cutting, that kind of thing, to people like us and you. One of the first things that happened with uh, Cory Doctorow's book there was literally within months, somebody modeled the front and produced this. And this came through the post. He showed it to me, and I was like, that's a toy. I started playing with it. When you build a traditional toy, if you want to build a doll, for instance, this is what you will see in a traditional shop. Uh, a doll will cost tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds to create from top to toe in terms of molding. And you then mass produce the product. You buy the space in the toy store for the most part. So if, if you want to be a startup and go up against these folks, you have to go up against people like Mattel. You buy that space. You stock up your product in warehouse. You spend billions on marketing sometimes, um, millions, more billions yet. Uh, Lego spent 40 million launching Friends in the US alone, and that's their pink Lego for girls, which you think would need no marketing at all. Customization also with mass-produced product doesn't really happen, because you've made these molds, you make thousands and thousands of the same thing that goes to the same person. American Girl um, does it the hard way. They produce 40 different types of doll at great cost, that are almost identical so that you just choose the one that looks most like you. This is a $500 million business for Mattel and the fastest growing part of their profits. This is what's cool with On Demand. And this is what we do. So I'm going to rush through the next bit because this is just quickly the story of what's happened in the past year and a half. We went live with physical product like you do with software. Embarrassed, like Reed Hoffman says, we launched, it was awful, it was white, it wasn't toy safe, and we iterated, but it was live. And then we had customers, they started to make us laugh. They helped us develop things. This is one of our customers testing with inks for skin color. We make patterns, we put them online, they send us back ideas. So this year we launched an app with skin color. Characters started to emerge. People started doing animation. This is a 12-year-old in Dubai, sends us pictures of her doll um, house. Lego people came, turned up. So now the doll has a Lego backplate, if you want it. Um, it's gone as far as uh, our royal family. 
And people started to hack the dolls as well, because the head, you can take it apart, turn it into a robot if you want to. We're currently in Selfridges, which is a large store on Oxford Street, and we've gone from demo to Selfridges in a year, which is um, pretty much unheard of with the traditional industry. And we're working with them on iterating how you do on-demand in a traditional retail environment. Next stop, kids. So we're working on all these things at the moment. They're going live week on week. We're shipping. This is our target, the 10-year-old girl. We're rebranding to suit her. The game that launches in a couple of months um, will make lots of product real. You can see a 3D printer there, up there. So uh, the kids will be able to not only turn their avatar into a doll, but the cloth that they draw on the clothes into physical things, and the shoes into shoes. I've got one in my pocket. Some of the things, you'll have to reach level 20 before you can print out a certain object, so you tie that game achievement back into physical. We're doing this with kits as well, because we can do this on all levels of variable pricing. So we're testing stuff out, treating physical like digital, iterating live. We conceived of these four weeks ago. Within two weeks, they're in the store, and now we're iterating on response. And the kids love it. Uh, just yesterday, Selfridges launched the Christmas lights on Oxford Street, and they had Jessie J singing. And two weeks ago, they said, can you do a limited edition Jessie J doll, which usually would take nine months to produce? And we said yes. And we did it in two weeks. And yesterday, Jessie J Instagrammed a picture of herself and her makey doll. And she said it was awesome. That's us. Thank you very much. Questions from the jury? Really good stuff. Thank you. Uh, if you want to build a company, let's say, revenue of 50 million, uh, how much money do you need in putting the entire package in place? Um, revenue of 50 million. Well, so we have two revenue streams, which is with, in January, it'll be digital revenue and the physical revenue. Now, the margins on the physical at the moment are uh, smaller than with traditional manufacturing, um, but that's because 3D printing is still slightly expensive. But with a combination of Moore's law, which is happening right now, prices are coming down. So three years ago, with the extrusion, the machines turned on the market, and the machine dropped from 70,000. And it's the same with the materials. So this is a slightly longer play than your traditional digital business. But there are multiple revenue streams, all of which are well understood, yeah. OK. So you're sort of a 21st century Build-A-Bear. Correct. Which is, which is great, I think. My, my question is more regarding the defensibility of it, because you know Mattel could come, buy the machines, blanket it out into every toy store, yeah. and take your market. Yeah. How well, you they could take some of it. So we don't worry about Mattel. I, I think Mattel are amazing, um, Lego, et cetera. But um, can they copy us? Yes, they can. But the reason that we're treating physical like digital is that we think that by putting stuff out there and talking to our customers from day one, we grow love, and it's working. So, I mean, Mattel is, is um, likely, definitely going to be looking at 3D printing, but they're an enormous business. Most of their business is in the Far East. It's going to take a while for them to change, and meanwhile, we're growing. So, yeah, we don't. We're happy to join them. Yeah, so I don't actually think you need to be worried about Mattels and other big players. You're definitely on the right path. My work in a way is that, because this is a branding game, Correct. it's going to take a huge amount of money to build a brand, or is it? So uh, can you elaborate on that? And is so your brand being uh, built on uh, the physical or in the digital side? So it is both, but the reason we consider ourselves a games company that makes toys, and the reason the game is, is second is simply because the toy, the manufacturing side of this had never been done before. So we set out to prove it could be done, and now the game's coming out. So that's why I said we were pre-beta. When the game comes out, that's when that loop is finally closed, and we think that the game is the best possible audience-building thing. So supercell with toys. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's great, Thank guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.